Welcome to Main <clears throat> Raptors. We'll be getting started in just one minute. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Maine's Raptors. We're going to go down to Jade now, who is live at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jade, and I'm an educator for the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. And today we are at the Maine Wildlife Park in Gray, Maine. Um, the Wildlife Park is home to over 30 different species of native Maine wildlife. Um, all the animals here can no longer live in the wild on their own, and that is for a number of different reasons. For some of them, they were orphaned or injured. Um, in some cases, they were even illegal pets that are human dependent. Um, and if you want to learn more about the park, you can go to mainwildlifepark.com and learn about our different wildlife that's here and um, visiting the park. Today, we are focusing on raptors. Raptors are also known as birds of prey. Raptors um, eat meat, they are carnivores, um, and they all have adaptations for hunting and um, catching prey. So we'll look at a few different raptors. So what is a raptor? In Maine, a raptor can be um, an eagle, a hawk, a vulture, an owl, or a falcon. And they all share some um, characteristics that all raptors have in common. Um, all of them, no matter where they live, um, when or where they hunt, they are carnivores. Even vultures who are known as um, nature's cleanup crew, they scavenge um, from like dead animals. And some other raptors will also do that when their live food sources are difficult to find, they're kind of scarce, um, but they all eat meat and they're all carnivores. I have here an osprey mount, it's kind of big. <laughs> and we can see some of these raptor characteristics on this osprey. Um, we can see that they have um, very sharp talons, like a little bit closer, we can see those talons for grabbing fish and this beak, this very sharp hooked beak for eating and ripping up their food. Um, so osprey, they do um, live by the water. They do fish. Um, another name for them uh, is the um, fishing hawk. That's what some people call them, even though they um, are an osprey. And we'll look at some other um, adaptations that raptors have too on an owl here. So this is the great horned owl. And one of the things I wanna look at are these eyes. Raptors have very keen senses. Um, their eyesight and for some of them, their hearing um, are very important for them to hunt and catch their prey. Um, and this is the great horned owl, which we'll talk about in depth more later. But some of those raptor characteristics, again, you can see the talons on this owl and also that hooked beak and those big eyes and special um, feathers and facial feathers for their eyesight and their hearing also. Behind me is the bald eagle enclosure here at the wildlife park and eagles are one of the um, more popular birds for people to see soaring up above above and um, hunting and looking for food. Um, we do have um, both a bald eagle and a golden eagle um, here at the wildlife park. Both of them have wing amputations. Um, 
so they can no longer fly. They do um, hop around and they can kind of use their wings still to um, move, but they can't fly or soar like most eagles um, would need to to find their food and hunt and survive. Um, so we have their enclosures built specially so that they can get around with lots of different perches um, and kind of steps so that they can still move around their enclosures um, freely without having to fly. And sometimes the osprey is confused for eagles. Um, they hunt and um, survive in very similar habitats and in different uh, similar ways. So osprey and eagles will both live by the water. They both have a diet um, consisting of a lot of fish and sometimes other small mammals too. Um, I have a bald eagle mount here also. And we can see some of those bald eagle um, very like defining characteristics. So of course the color here. So juvenile eagles, young eagles actually don't have their white feathers on their heads. They get those um, white feathers as they mature and they reach their, reach their adult age. So only adult bald eagles have those white heads. Um, juveniles will actually be mistaken for golden eagles because golden eagles are brown on their whole body. So sometimes young eagles, young bald eagles look like golden eagles. And we can also see again, these really sharp talons for grabbing and carrying their prey and a very large hooked beak. And they're a really big bird. Um, eagles can have a very, very broad wingspan and they're very tall. Um, they're one of the largest raptors. And an interesting thing about raptors is that the females are often larger than the males. Um, and that can be different between different species. Sometimes the size variance between the males and females is more or less, but in most of the raptors and all the raptors, the females are larger than the males. So we are gonna walk around a little bit today and look at several other species of raptors that are here at the park. Um, for time's sake, we can't see every single one of them. Um, you'd have to come to the park to see them all, but we'll focus on a couple different raptors today and hopefully get close enough to see some of them. So I'm gonna pick us up right now and we are gonna head over to one of our more nocturnal raptor species here in Maine. And those are our owls. So being nocturnal means that you're more active at night. So they have special adaptations for hunting and capturing their prey during the night. So here we have two, um, Great Horned Owls at the Wildlife Park. I'm gonna take my phone off of my stand here so we can hopefully get a closer look at this Great Horned Owl. So he's up in the top of his branches up there at the top of this enclosure. And you can see some of those um, characteristics of the Great Horned Owl. So of course their name comes from those feathers on the tops of their heads that look kind of like horns. And you can probably kind of make out those really big yellow eyes. And they actually have an eyelid that is transparent, it's clear. So it can actually um, blink and kind of clean their eyes off, but still be able to see through that special lens that they have that can go over their eyes differently than our own eyelids. And they also are really, really quiet flyers. Some people say that owls actually have silent flight because their flight is so quiet. They have special feathers um, that makes them so that the air doesn't make any sound as they're flying. So they can swoop down and catch prey without them even knowing that they're coming. And both the owls here at the park have um, some injuries. So the one has cataracts. She has bilateral cataracts. So she has cataracts in both of her eyes. So that definitely affects her sight. I'm sure that even with some cataracts, her eyesight is probably better than a lot of ours is, but not as good as it would need to be in the wild to catch her prey um, and see them from a far distance. And the other owl here, the one that we're looking at, um, has a brain injury. 
is probably from um, hitting into something. Most of the birds that have any kind of brain trauma, it's often from a vehicle collision. So they hit into a window or a vehicle and it kind of rocked their brain around so they can't um, hunt and use their adaptations as well as they would need to in the wild. So that's why these are at the park. And I have another um, owl mount here. And we can look a little bit more closely at some of those things I was just talking about. So again, these eyes. So really big round eyes, they're forward facing. So they can um, see their prey from very far away. Another special adaptations that owls have is their necks. So they are able to turn their heads a lot further than we can. They have actually extra bones in their necks. Um, I think they have a, twice as many bones as humans do. So they can ro rotate their heads so they can see past, like behind their backs. They can't do um, a 360. So they can't spin their heads all the way around in circles. Um, but they can look back a lot further because they have a huge range of motion with their necks. And these feathers too, I mentioned around their faces, those help with their hearing. So not only do they have amazing eyesight, but they also have really, really good hearing because these feathers direct sound um, right to where their ears are so that they can hear really well. So they're gonna be able to hear and see that prey from really, really far away and then use that silent flight to sneak up and grab them with those sharp claws, those big talons on the bottoms of their feet and then eat them with those beaks. So they don't have any teeth. Instead, they use their beaks to rip up their food. Those are some owl adaptations. Next, we're gonna go look at some hawks. So I'm picking up and moving again in the trees a little bit here. So feels like we're in a jungle. So we're gonna look at the red-tailed hawks. I'm actually gonna go around to the side here so we can get a better look at them. This is the main jungle. <laughs> and this is the back side of this enclosure, um, opposite of the public side. That's why it might look a little different for anyone who's been here to the wildlife park before. I want to get a better view of our red-tailed hawks here. So up on top, again, up on his perch up there, that's one of the red-tailed hawks. And there are two of them in here. And you can see those red tail feathers that gives them their name. And those can often be seen when they're soaring too. The other one's down on the ground in the back corner. Might be a little bit tougher to see because it's further away. But two red tailed hawks here. And they both also have wing injuries. Um, so they are not able to fly very well. Um, we have a lot of branches and things built and perches in their um, enclosure also so that they can still hop around and kind of step up. Most birds of prey feel safest um, when they're up high where they can use all those adaptations that they have to see and hear and be very aware of their surroundings. And there's two different types of hawks. There are the buteos and the accipiters. And the buteos, like the red-tailed hawk here, um, they have larger bodies and very long, broad wings. They're kind of built more like a um, cargo plane or a large passenger plane, if you compare it to that. And then the accipiters, um, like the sharp shins, sharp shins on the broad wings and longer tails. So they're kind of more like, if you thought about it, um, like a small plane and, or like a jet more than a large like cargo plane. 
So this is one of those sharp shinned hawks. This is a mount, so it's not alive, but this is a sharp shinned hawk. And you see they're pretty small. And they're one of the um, occipiter hawks. And then the red tail that we looked at earlier is one of those buteos. So you can see that this one has um, different wings. They're a little bit uh, shorter and a little bit less broad and a long tail has some cool designs on that tail too, that striped pattern on the sharp shin hawk and some patterns on the front of them also. So really cool birds. And even though they're smaller, they still have this really sharp hooked beak and these very sharp talons. And they're gonna be a little bit more um, agile and be able to fly um, faster and move a little bit quicker than the larger birds. So even though they're, they're smaller, um, that can help in, in other ways with having faster flight and being able to make um, quicker maneuvers through the air. And one of the interesting things about the sharp shins is that they were actually hurt by the same DDD, DDT pesticides that hurt um, the eagle populations in the United States. But very similar to the eagles, they made an amazing comeback. So once that DDT um, pesticide was banned, both the sharp, shin, sharp shinned hawks and eagles um, made a strong comeback. They're really resilient. Next, we're going to look at some vultures. And again, I mentioned that vultures are scavengers. They're nature's cleanup crew. So they eat um, carrion, which is dead animals. Um, it's a little bit yucky but it's an easy, easy food source. So you'll often see these um, birds like soaring or looking around um, by roadsides and things like that, um, where there might be some roadkill for them. And I'm gonna turn us around here to see one of our turkey vultures here at the wildlife park. And this is one of the older animals in the park. Um, he's actually over 40 years old. And our turkey vultures, a lot of them were involved in vehicle collisions. Like I said, they find food close to the road, which when there are cars zooming by can be really dangerous for them. So a lot of them end up with wing injuries um, or sometimes brain injuries from being hit by vehicles. So they live here at the park now. And they eat a different diet of um, lots of different meats here at the park. We use a lot of snowshoe hair. Um, our smaller animals get mice or, um, and for the turkey vultures, they'll also get other kinds of meat because they are a lot less picky of eaters than some of like the hawks, eagles, and owls that really just want mice and other small mammals. Um, they'll eat just about anything. And the stinkier it is, the more they seem to like it. So interesting birds. One of their stranger adaptations is that they'll actually throw up, they will puke and like regurgitate their food onto their um, feet when it's hot to help cool their feet down. So they have some yucky adaptations, but it helps them survive. Um, and they also spread their wings out. So you'll often see vultures um, with their wings spread way out and that's to help cool their bodies down also. So as it gets sunny and like hotter here, they'll all get up on their perches and they'll all have their wings spread out trying to cool their bodies down. Now we're gonna look at one of the fastest raptors. So this is one of the fastest animals ever recorded and these are the falcons. So the peregrine falcons are one of the um, fastest animals ever recorded. They can fly over 200 miles per hour um, when they are dive bombing or um, like flying down onto their prey. And that's one of their hunting strategies is they will um, soar up high above other birds um, and they'll actually dive bomb down onto them at really, really fast flights. And when they're flying forwards, they can still fly um, 
over 60 miles per hour. And that's not even when they're doing that dive bombing behavior. Um, and here we have a kestrel. And the kestrel is a smaller relative of the peregrine. Um, they still have some of those adaptations to make them extremely fast flyers. Um, the one here at the park can be really hard to see sometimes because it moves around a lot and it's very, very fast and they're smaller. I have a peregrine falcon mount here. And this is a young peregrine falcon. This is a juvenile. And the kestrel is about half the size of this juvenile um, peregrine. So a lot smaller than the bigger falcons, but still has some of the same um, adaptation. So really um, strong wings and very fast um, design. They're very aerodynamic and very, very fast flyers and maneuver through the air really well. Those are the falcons. Do, do. And the kestrel is the smallest falcon in North America. Um, they will hunt small mammals and insects, but they do sometimes catch um, bigger um, prey and they'll actually store them. Um, so if they have a surplus of food, they'll hide them in places like fence posts, um, in hollowed out trees and grasses, so they can go back to it later. Um, and they're sometimes mistaken for songbirds. They have really pretty um, designs and markings, especially on their faces. They have some striping and some markings. And they're often sitting along fence posts um, looking for their next meal. So sometimes they look like a songbird, but they're a bird of prey um, and they're really amazing predators. So not a songbird. So we've talked a lot about a lot of different um, raptors and their unique adaptations. Um, all those adaptations make them um, both physical and behavioral adaptations make them amazing um, predators and an important part of our ecosystem. And I'd love to answer any questions that have come up about falcons. Uh, one question was, what animal is making that noise we're hearing? So we probably heard a couple different noises. Um, across from me here, I'll turn this around is the ground bird exhibit. And in the ground bird exhibit, we have three different species of birds. There are peacocks, um, ringneck pheasants, and turkeys. And they all make a lot of noise. Um, the noisiest ones are usually our peacocks. So probably you are hearing peacocks. But all the birds are in this area. So the ground birds are in the center, the raptors do a horseshoe around them, and the songbirds right next to them too. And that's on top of, of course, all the wild birds flying around also making noises. Yes, I think it was the peacock they were referring to, very loud. Another question is how many different um, kinds of raptors do you have there? We have, I think, we have two different species of eagle. We have three species of hawks, um, one kestrel, and four different species of owls. So we have a very wide variety. Oh, and the turkey vultures. So we have a good variety of different um, raptors that you can find here in Maine. Um, and that's not all of them. There's still other species that are not represented here at the wildlife park um, that are also native to Maine. I'm just walking back over to the eagle so we can see her while I answer questions. Uh, about how big is the kestrel? So kestrels are smaller and um, they're kind of the size of that sharp shinned hawk that I showed earlier. Um, so they're going to be maybe between 10 tall. Um, so a smaller bird. Uh, someone would like to know, um, how did you end up with a peacock at the wildlife park? Yeah, so the peacocks are the only non-native species here at the wildlife park. So 
So every other species that's here is or once was a native species. The peacocks are native to, uh, I want to say like the Indo-Pacific or Asia, um, but they are a grandfathered species. So the wildlife park used to be a game farm and the people who lived here before had raised domestic peacocks and they have always stayed here since then um, back in the back in the 80s and 90s when we started to have peacocks. They've just always been here since then. So they are the only non-native species here at the wildlife park. Yes, they're a very, very common thing to find around similar facilities. And I just did a quick search and it says that most peacocks, um, the blue ones are mostly from India, but they've been spread out throughout the world. Um, another question is, will any of the raptors eat any of the um, small songbirds or other birds that you could find in your yard? They definitely can. So a lot of these different species um, will eat um, small birds. Some of them will even eat other raptors. So the larger raptors and the ones that are um, pretty strong and feisty will take down um, other flying songbirds, raptors, um, small mammals and, and fish. Um, so they have a lot of different diets based on their different habitats and where they're hunting or when they're hunting. Um, but they will definitely um, hunt other birds and sometimes even other raptors. Uh, someone would like to know what type of food the eagle, the bald eagle would eat. Our eagles um, mostly eat snowshoe hare here at the wildlife park. Um, they will sometimes also eat mice, so we'll give them larger mice, um, but they mostly eat snowshoe hare because in the wild they would be eating um, those kinds of things. If we get uh, salmon or um, some fairly fresh fish, we'll give them some fish also. Um, but most days they are eating snowshoe hare here. And to add on to that, they're also quite big on scavenging. So although they're famous for eating fish in the wild, they're quite big on scavenging, especially uh, things like roadkill deer and things like that. Um, so I would like to know what is the biggest species of raptor in Maine? Yeah, the I think it's the golden eagles. Um, golden eagles, especially the females, can be extremely large. They are larger than bald eagles. Um, so they have I think it's a um, 78 inch wingspan and they can be up to like 40 inches tall. Um, so they're a very large raptor. Someone is curious, how do you get snowshoe hare to feed the birds? Yeah, so all of our snowshoe hare are um, from a supplier. So we need to have a constant supply of them um, and so we have, we feed out not only to the birds, snowshoe hare, but also to, um, some of our cat species that are here at the park. Um, so we need to have a lot of snowshoe hare and, um, sometimes we get it donated, but for the most part, we have to keep it so, um, such a steady supply of it that we need to purchase it, um, from a, a private sales person that provides us with all of the snowshoe hare. Uh, and a question was, are, are raptors only predators? Yes, so that's one of the distinguishing characteristics of raptors is that all of them are carnivores. So they all eat meat and they are all predators. So they all hunt for prey. Um, and occasionally they might fall prey um, to another predator. And that happens a lot in ecosystems. It's very complex. Um, most animals are not only a predator, only prey, um, but a lot of these raptors are one of the top predators um, and rarely fall prey to other predators. All right, and that seems to be it for our questions this morning, but if you have more questions, please send us um, your messages and we'd be happy to answer them for you. Excellent, those are some really great questions. Um, thank you all for joining us for Maine's Raptors. Um, I know this is a little different format than we usually do. There was a lot more moving around, 
So thank you for being patient and holding on while I was uh, climbing through the main jungle here at the Wildlife Park. Um, and thank you all for joining. And you can go to mefishwildlife.com to find more um, Maine wildlife resources. And you can also go to mainewildlifepark.com to learn more about the wildlife park. So thank you all again.